and it just sends shivers up my spine. Two days ago, my daughter sent me a video. She lives in LA and she scripted it, she acted in it, but it left me a little bit surprised. Here it is. Ti sei mai chiesto? Come ci si sente quando il tempo si ferma? L'ho sentito. Più vado veloce, più il tempo si muove lentamente. Un momento può durare per sempre. E a volte per sempre è solo un secondo. È un brivido che cerco. Il vento su di me. Il rombo sotto di me. Il pericolo intorno a me. Voglio cogliere questa sensazione. Se non riesco a prenderlo in questa vita, continuerò a inseguirlo nella prossima. I said a little surprised because I too, at her age, was looking for the next thrill, the next adventure, the next conquest. Heck, I still do nowadays, actually. But the question is, why? And this is what I wanted to look at a little bit more closely. If you're chasing after thrills to feel alive, something is not right. Isabella, my daughter, says it is a thrill that I'm seeking. And if I cannot catch it in this life, I will seek for it in the next. My dear Isabella, my dear friends, the thrills we seek in this life are hardly filling us because they're just like a fleeting moment. And the sensation that you get on the first thrill is not the same by the time you repeat it a second time. Psychologically speaking, it's called the law of diminishing return. You remember the first time you went out with a girl or a guy uh, when you were a young kid? I was 12 years old and there was this uh, celebration at night in my town and this one gal and I were walking through the streets of the town together and once the event was over she asked me to actually accompany her back to her home and on the way home you know the two hands are getting close to each other and all of a sudden we just held hands and it just sends shivers up my spine. But already the next time we got together, the holding hands wasn't enough. I had to hold her arm, I had to hold her shoulders and more and more and more each time. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And probably a lot of you are in agreement that they're nodding right now. These thrills are like dust to a black hole that will never be able to fill it. It reminds me of the Samaritan woman whom Christ met at the well. Do you remember that scene? First of all, Jesus and his disciples did not have to go through that area because Jews did not mix with Samaritans. Samaritans were considered a half-breed because they actually interbred with the Gentiles, with the pagans. But as often happens, Jesus had a special appointment with this woman, as he does with each one of us. And we know that she goes at noon because she doesn't want to be seen, to be judged by the other woman who typically go early in the morning or later at night, because these women know about her situation. And Jesus tells her, whoever drinks of the water that I have will never thirst again. Actually, the water that I give him will become a spring from within that will bring eternal life. And the response to the woman was, give me, in the imperative, give me that water so that I may not thirst again. And then Jesus says something strange. He says, go get your husband and come back. And she says, I have no husband. And he says, you're saying correctly because you have had five and the one whom you live with right now is not your husband. So why the transition from water to the husband. In my mind, what Christ wanted to do, he wanted to expose the black hole in this woman's life. She was looking for that thrill, that fulfillment in a relationship. And though she has had six of them, 
she was still thirsty. That is why Christ is telling her, if you continue to fill yourself with that kind of water, you will not be satisfied because your container is full of holes. Christ wants to plug the hole in my jar, the hole in your jars, and then fill him with something that is lasting, his love. And when you truly experience his presence, his guidance, his love, you're not seeking after these kind of thrills any longer because you're already alive and not just living. The famous phrase in John 10.10 10 tells us that the enemy comes to create these holes in our lives. And Christ instead wants to come to plug him and to fill us to overflow. Dear friends, the best lasting thrill is to really get to know him. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. Remember to give the thumb up and subscribe if you haven't done so. And until next time, have a fantastic weekend. Ciao.